Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. My name is Stanley and along with my wife Jen, we are the Crumbs in the Philippines. A Phil Am couple living in Lipa City, Batangas. And we really appreciate you guys taking the time to drop by and watch our videos. We hope you'll take a moment to like and subscribe and share the video with as many people as possible. It helps us with the algorithm and gets more people to the exposure to our videos. Okay, today we're going to talk about our expense report for the month of July. We just got our electric bill yesterday, which is what I wait for every month before making this video. Hopefully you, you don't see the shaking of the wind. I can see the camera moving as I sit here. And hopefully that won't that won't make too much of a difference. But as always, guys, we really appreciate you, okay? So I'm going to get started. As of the making of this video, the exchange rate in the Philippines is for every one dollar is 56.69 pesos. Very good exchange rate. I and many other expats are very happy about that. If you look at the extended forecast, it looks like our exchange rate is going to go above 58 pesos per dollar here by the end of August. I'm really looking forward to seeing if that is, is going to come true. That, that would be great news. Anything north of 50 is a good number for me, and I'm happy with that. So let's get started with our housing cost, which is fixed, and I'm always happy to report that each month because it's one month closer to ownership, but it's 30,000 pesos or $529. Our electric bill, 3,347 pesos or $59. That's down 600 pesos for the second straight month, which I can attribute to the cooler temperatures. The temperatures have been dropping off. I'm sitting outside right now. There's a nice cool breeze. and I can feel the change in season. Although you don't really experience the seasons here in the Philippines, you can. there's a definite cutoff where the temperature starts to drop. And we don't use the air conditioner nearly as much. And that's already occurring now. Our internet bill, which we still have two months left on our contract before we switch, is 3,162 pesos or $56. And we anticipate that dropping by over one half whenever we switch to Globe Wi-Fi, which we'll use a wireless router and, and get the signal from the Globe cell tower, which is very close to where we live here. Our water bill was up this month as well. We saw a lot of complaints on the Facebook page for the subdivision here. And ours was 402 pesos or $7.10 for 14 cubic meters. That was our usage. And I know for the longest time we, we were down around 260 to 280 pesos a month. So that, that's been quite a jump over the last few months. And, we're not the only ones to notice that. There have been some complaints about that. Our drinking water, 210 pesos or $3.70. Our LP gas or cooking gas, 300 pesos we allot each month. We did buy a bottle last month that was 800 pesos. But we since we allot for that every month, we just keep it at 600 on our expense report or $5.29. Gas for the scooter, 610 pesos, or $10.76. Rainy season is just starting to wind down, and this last month it rained a lot. So we didn't get out and do a lot of riding in the month of July. So that's the reason our gas is quite a bit less this month. Our food is also down this month. I don't really have an explanation for that. Either maybe the cost was down a little bit at the wet market or we didn't buy quite as much, but it, we certainly ate the same amount of food as we normally do. But our cost was 16,887 pesos or $297.88. Our restaurant bill for July, 2,350 pesos or $41.45 for the month. 
Jan and I both, we don't have any issues, and we actually go out of our way to look for mom and pop type establishments where they cook fresh food, and you, it, they sell it very, very cheaply, and you can sit and eat and have a nice meal for well under six dollars for two people. Or you could go to the name brand franchise type operations and spend a lot more money each month which I, I just don't really care to do anyway. It's a lot of fried food. We didn't have any miscellaneous costs in July because we didn't take any overnight trips or didn't have to pay any eco fees or tourism fees or anything like that. Jen's Social Security, 650 pesos, same every month, or $11.46 for last month. Fiddle Health for Jen, 350 pesos for the month or $6.72. I know we'll get some comments on asking why I neglected to mention my health coverage. I'm going to put a link down in the description box below to a video that we did earlier where we talked about health insurance in the Philippines and it describes in detail my own personal situation and the reason that I don't have a monthly expenditure on our expense report for health insurance. I'm fairly well covered I had a health savings account during my employment days and I brought that with me to the Philippines along with my HSA debit card which is I can use at, for any health related cost here in the Philippines. It's a pretty good, pretty good deal. If you have the opportunity to take advantage of that or you've got several years to go before you retire into a foreign country, seriously consider opening up a health savings account. Especially if you're healthy and you don't go to the doctor more than once or twice a year for checkups, your health savings account is pre-tax dollars and it can add up quite significantly over time and give you a large chunk of change to use for health whenever you move to a foreign country. Mine was very, very significant whenever, because I did it for almost 15 years. I contributed quite a bit of money to the account and my employer would match my contributions. My first employer doubled my contribution, but then at the last two places that I worked at, they only matched it. But that was still enough to add up quite a bit. Our homeowner association fees, 500 pesos or $8.81. And of course, I mentioned it last on the last video, but that takes care of our security guards that give us really good security. Our garbage pickup three times per week. They're just like clockwork. They do a really good job. And also the maintenance guys that trim and cut the grass and, and go around and keep the place looking nice. And, and they do a really good job. Plantation is not the newest subdivision in the Lima area. And we're actually going to do a video where we feature some subdivisions that are in and around Lima City here pretty soon. And there's at least 15 that I know of that we'll have to put on the list. And, three or four just within 2K of where we sit right now. A, a couple of brand new ones as well. And, and we'll give some kind of relative prices for what you can expect based on how long the subdivisions have been opened and developed and, and things like that. And then this last month we also had to we load our phones 400 pesos or seven dollars and five cents that was 200 pesos each to load Jen's phone and my phone which brings us to our total for the month of fifty nine thousand one hundred and sixty eight pesos or one thousand and forty three dollars and seventy one cents which is a fairly good number for us and we average right around the one thousand mark each month and we have been for the last year and a half and now I just want to give you guys a couple of tips. I've had many people ask me, like, what can you do to uh, lower your cost each month? And one of the things that I would recommend doing is be very selective whenever you choose where you're going to live, your rental or, or house that you're going to buy. Just realize when you get here that there's no shortage of housing. And you can find many, many offerings 
that are well below 10,000 pesos per month if you're so inclined. I mean, go to the area that you think you want to stay and check it out. And if it feels right, get you an Airbnb there in that city, town, or wherever it is. Airbnbs are very, very reasonable in the Philippines and, and you can stay there for a month or two months while you're looking for a place and don't just take the very first place that presents itself I promise you there's no shortage you'll be able to look at multiple properties and pick the one that's the best for you I know we have several expats that live here in this actual subdivision one I know in particular lived in a two-story house which had a bathroom downstairs, a bathroom upstairs, two bedrooms, and uh, he was only paying 7,500 pesos for the house, and it was really nice. We visited him there several times. I, I was impressed, and I, I was got a little bit jealous that he got such a good deal on it. But I, the first place that we lived in in the subdivision was only 13,000 pesos. So if you take your time and look around, you can find some really nice places for really cheap. Another thing I would recommend is using electric fans as much as possible and try to use your air con sparingly. By far the air con is the hugest load on our electric bill. Whenever we use the air conditioning a lot, we see our bill go up to as much as $100 per month. But when we use it sparingly, like say for example this last month, we're down to $59. And then here in a couple of months, as you'll see if you continue to watch these videos, that our electric bill will go down to around $40 or less per month because we're not using the air conditioner that much. All of the other electrical appliances, and they just don't draw that much electricity here. And the cost per kilowatt hour is fairly low. I've, all, I've been very happy with the electric bill. And then the last recommendation I would make to keep your costs low is on transportation. If you're physically able, get yourself a scooter. It doesn't have to be brand new or, or you can buy them brand new. For $2,000 you can get a really nice brand new scooter which gets tremendous gas mileage and you'll save yourself thousands of pesos over the course of couple of months or even as much as 10,000 pesos a year in transportation and in monthly payments because most people can't afford to buy a new car paying cash unless it's a something used but if you, I'd, I'd really like not having a car payment and not having to pay an insurance payment each month which you don't have to do if you have a scooter and you can get by with ten dollars a month for your transportation costs and go anywhere you want to go. Now there's going to be some kickback. I know people will tell me, well, you can't drive it in the rain. And you can't really carry a lot of cargo in a scooter. But I know Jen and I don't have any issue whatsoever. We were able to carry enough groceries and, and things from the market that we need to. And anything else you can have delivered. It's, it's no problem getting stuff delivered from Lazada, or Shopee or any of the stores, most of them offer delivery. The SM Grocery, if you buy a piece of furniture from there, they'll deliver it. But now, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not just trying to tell people to come and drive a scooter, especially if they're not physically able or they're not comfortable doing so. Please, if you're not, by all means, don't do it because it is inherently more dangerous than driving a car. But if you're careful and pay attention when you're out on the road, you can lower those risks quite a bit when it comes to driving on a scooter. It's also a nice way to get out and, and see a lot of off the beaten path places that you just can't reach in a car. But of course, as I said before, I, I would never expect someone to just hop on a scooter and, and drive it if they weren't comfortable doing so. so I was just trying to come up with uh, ways to help people lower their monthly expenses each month. Well, anyway, guys, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I hope you guys are enjoying your life as much as I'm enjoying mine here. 
We'll see you next time. Take care.